Hello, I'm Shannon Whiteside, the program director of the Elviary. This is the eighth year of the Elviary, and we are so excited to give you a preview of some of the books we'll be reading for the 23-24 school year. If you want to learn more about the Elviary, you can download the viewbook, which is linked in the video description below. The viewbook also contains a free term of picture study lessons in our updated lesson plan format. In this video, I will be talking about Form 1, which is grades 1 through 3. Let's start with Bible. First graders read Hurlbut's story of the Bible. This is my vintage copy, but there are newer copies that you can purchase. This is a great story Bible that closely adheres to scripture without embellishment or opinion. It sets a great foundation for understanding the overall story arc of the Bible from the Old Testament through the New. And if you want to just read the passages straight from the Bible, those verses are provided as well. The second graders will be reading through selections from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Basically, the stories they read in first grade in the Story Bible will now be read straight from the Bible. The New Testament selections will be from the Gospels, following the life of Christ. Third graders will have their own set of lessons, although the Old Testament will be the same as the fourth through sixth graders. For New Testament, they'll be reading through the book of John. For the Old Testament, they'll be reading some Old Testament narratives, but a lot of the time they are reading the Psalms. Now that might seem a little odd for children this age, but I found a wonderful resource written for this age range that guides them through the Psalms and how Psalms can be used as prayers to God. It is called Wonderful, Ancient Psalms Ever New. I really think children will find it interesting and give them more insight into a book of the Bible that they may have not read as much, but hear a lot about. We have a great teacher resource that we have added this year. It is called the Bible Story Handbook by John and Kim Walton. Sometimes it's hard to know what the main idea of a narrative is. And Walton's book helps us understand the biblical context, mistakes to avoid when reading a certain passage. It is something that you will want to read beforehand before you teach the lesson. And perhaps you can share some of the things with your student or include it into the discussion afterwards. Another resource we have is God's Bible Timeline. We have been using this one for a couple years and we're, we really like the way that it shows the chronological order and helps children make sense of how things happened and when they happened. We are also having first graders read one missionary biography that will be read over term two and three. They can choose from Gladys Allward, The Little Woman. She was a missionary to China in the 1900s. Or you can choose Teresa of Calcutta, who is known for her work with the poor in India. Second graders will be reading both of these missionary biographies. And third graders will have an additional one called God Smuggler by Brother Andrew. This is the Young Reader's Edition. He smuggled Bibles into communist countries that banned Christianity after World War II. Now let's look at geography. For first grade, we use selections from Mason's Elementary Geography book. She has a nice narrative that goes through the basic concepts such as the Earth's rotation and revolution around the sun, and we have built-in activities in the lesson plans so students can see the concepts in more tangible ways. We've also added a few new books this year to break down the concepts even more. Two examples of those books are The Reasons for the Seasons, which has nice illustrations showing how the different seasons happen. Another book we will use to talk about the water cycle is this beautifully illustrated book, Water Dance. With all our geography curriculum, we are being intentional about place-based education. 
Someone who has helped us think about this more is David Sobel in his book, Map Making with Children. He talks about the importance of starting where a child is at and that we do a disservice to children when we jump too quickly to abstract level and map reading and map making. So when we start with places where children have an emotional bond, we are giving them a sense of place and they're building a relationship first with the things around them and then they can spread out. So we are doing a lot more map making all across the grades, starting with building models and then getting into drawing maps. So you will see this as a change in our lesson plans this year. In second and third grade, we will continue to use the book Cross Country, which is a great book to talk about geography concepts as we follow a family on a road trip from California to Washington, DC. And to supplement the reading, we're going to be using a book called 50 Adventures in 50 States. This is a really fun book with great illustrations. It shows what activities you can do in the state based on the geographical features, such as mountains, lakes, forests, or deserts. We also have some extra books talking about different people, such as Grandma Gatewood hikes the Appalachian. This is a true story about the first woman to hike solo across the Appalachian Trail. She was in her late 60s. This will be a fun read for the kids. History is the next subject I wanna talk about. Our first graders always study pre-Columbian history. The history of the people who are already here before the United States became a country. We study that through many wonderful picture books. We have this one called The Very First Americans that gives a nice overview of different Native American tribes. And then we get into more specific books that show the diversity between the Native American tribes. We have this book, Moonstick, about the Sioux. We have this one about the Cherokee Harvest Festival. We have Hiawatha and the Peacemaker and many more. In second grade, we begin our study of the U.S. that will be the same throughout all the grades. So in the Elviary, we have a four-year rotation for history. The historical period we will be studying for the 23-24 school year is 1900 to present. The modern period of history was a time of rapid change and new inventions, but also a difficult time filled with economic depression, world wars, and racial injustice. These topics will be addressed in age-appropriate ways throughout the grades. And as we immerse ourselves in this time period, we'll be learning about composers, artists, poets, and authors from this modern era. We're excited to be studying a living artist named Erin Hansen, who has allowed us to use her artwork and study it this year. We are not using a spine for second and third grade this year for history because we wanted them to be immersed in this time period through longer picture books that show the stories of those going through life during this time period. So by starting with these books, many about children, a topic that seems vast becomes more nuanced and accessible. There are some great books that I'm excited about. I will tell you about a couple of them. When we study the Depression era and the Dust Bowl, we will read this book called Leah's Pony. It's about a family and the hardships that they're going through at that time and the selfless girl named Leah and what she does to help save her family farm. There's another great book called The Great Migration. And I'm very excited about this book because the author is our term two artist, Jacob Lawrence. So every picture in here is a painting of his and he's depicting the great migration when the African-Americans left the South to find jobs in the urban North. And he tells that story through his pictures in this book. Another one, um, when we're talking about World War II, is this book called The Unbreakable Code. 
And it's about a grandfather telling his story to his grandson about his experience as a Navajo code talker during World War II. It's a great way to approach that topic. Another one for the modern history era is written by Buzz Aldrin himself, Reaching for the Moon. He talks about his childhood all the way through his experience of what it was like to walk on the moon. So I'm very excited about those books and our lesson plans will provide the context needed to be able to understand how these events fit in with the bigger picture of history. In Canadian history, the grades two through four will be reading The Great Adventure, an illustrated history of Canada for young Canadians as their spine. And they will also have books that will supplement the reading. One of those books is called Remembering John McRae. And it tells about the doctor and poet who was a very influential during World War I. And it also talks about the contributions Canadians made to the war effort. Let's talk about literature. In first grade, students will read American Tall Tales, classic fairy tales and fables. One of the volumes we read is the American Tall Tales, which has great illustrations. They also will read tales from Grimm. And the vivid descriptions in these tales and fables lend themselves to oral narrations as well as pictorial and dramatic narrations. So these are great books that will help the children start their journey on narration. The second and third graders will read Greek mythology, historical works, and other works of fiction. Mason had her students reading The Pilgrim's Progress. We have chosen a version of Pilgrim's Progress that's easier to understand while maintaining the integrity of the original. And this year, we also have included an alternative if Catholic families would like something else. This is an allegory called The King of the Golden City. Students will also be reading A Wonder Book, which is a great collection of Greek myths by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Part of literature is the reading of poetry. And this year we are going to be reading a book that will highlight poems from the 20th century. The 20th Century Children's Poetry Treasury. We wanted something that would be a fun collection and can expose children to more modern and living poets. Let's talk about physical education. For grades one through three, we have a variety of activities such as singing games, folk dancing, and competitive games. We like these books by John Fairbend. This is called Song Dances, and we have video instructions for several of the dances in here. We also use the book, Playground Songs and Rhymes, which is a great way for children to learn rhythm and coordination through hand clapping games and jump rope rhymes. The next thing I want to mention is life skills. For first grade, we have a course called Paper Folding for Beginners, and we provide video instructions for that. And first and second graders use the book Paper Sloyd to begin their journey with Sloyd. And we provide video instructions for that as well. First graders will also begin learning how to sew and they will continue that using the book Sewing Lessons, which provides a lot of fun projects that aren't too intimidating. Our handicraft for next year for grades two through 12 will be book binding, clay modeling and printmaking. We follow Mason's model and do clay modeling every year for one term, and we use the book, A Manual of Clay Modeling, as well as providing video instructions for the models. Now let's talk about science. Danielle is going to tell you about some of the books for next year. Hi guys, Danielle here to introduce you to some of our new science books for this year. Um, as some of you may know, because you participated in it, um, we conducted a survey earlier this year to understand exactly what kind of support you all needed in science. And that's contributed to a number of updates that we're making for this year. Um, one of the things that we heard is that you need that progressive building of knowledge that we have in science to be more explicit so that you don't have to be doing the work of trying to adjust this sort of generalized content from the form to the specific level of knowledge and experience at each grade level. We also heard that you can, um, that your students are feeling like it's a big jump sometimes from one form to the next. 
So it feels really hard in that first year of the form, but then by the time they get to the last year, they're kind of feeling like they're done. We also heard that you need your teacher training to be woven into your lesson plans as much as possible. One of the biggest changes that I think y'all will notice this year is that science is no longer being presented as a form subject where all of the grades across the form are doing the same thing. That doesn't mean that it's all grade level though. So for nature lore, um, you're gonna see that we are offering you three stories. Nature lore are stories that are meant to be like shared down and passed, um, passed on together. So we want you to enjoy these stories as part of your community and your culture that you're building. Um, the first one that we have for you is called That Quail Robert. And this is a really sweet story about a family who um, came upon a quail egg. Um, they were noticing these quail and they came upon this beautiful egg um, and they brought it in to their home to just enjoy the beauty of this egg. And then the egg hatches. And so they have this wonderful relationship with this little quail and he becomes a part of their family. And um, we get to share that story with them in this book. Another one of your um, nature lore books on the list is called Belle's Journey. Belle is an osprey, and this story was written by an osprey scientist up in the Northeast. Um, and he's telling us a story about one of the osprey that he has tagged and following her journey through all of the places that her tag is telling him that she's going and sharing all of her firsts with us. So it's really a wonderful story um, where we get to follow this osprey um, on some of her first journeys. And then another option um, that we're giving you is this book called The Hay Meadow um, by Gary Paulson. This is the author who wrote Hatchet that I know a lot of you probably grew up with and love. Um, and so this one is about a little boy, I think he's 11, and his grandfather invites him to come and stay on his sheep ranch for the summer and take care of 6,000 sheep. And so it's the story of him growing up and all of the things that he's experiencing that summer, all within the rich context that um, we get in Gary Paulson's stories um, of all of the nature that's going on around um, the story of this little boy growing up. So if you have a classroom of, say, first graders, you might be reading one of these stories for 15 minutes, say, at like lunch bunch. Or maybe you have a multi-age level group and you're reading this as part of like your morning basket or your circle time. Okay, so you've got some flexibility to choose one of these stories and really make this a place where um, your community or your group can share this as part of the community um, culture that you're building. Now, another piece um, to the science program in a Mason education is general science. And we really wanted to help you carve out some time to engage with the actual things. Mason said that essentially the thing is the thing that we're relating to. The books are there to support that, but we wanna make sure that the engagement with the things are getting the priority it needs. So in form one, we have the students progressing from habitat to biome and then introducing them to ecosystems. And in direct, um, in addition to that direct engagement in your lesson plans, you're gonna notice some beautiful picture books this year, just about two per term. Um, they're all wonderful picture books. Uh, and I think you're gonna love adding them to your library. But if for any reason you're tight, whether that's because of cost or space or anything like that, um, you can definitely find many, if not all of these at your local library. Um, and you can even substitute um, some of them if you have a beautiful one on a similar subject that you already own and love. But I do want you to understand what we scheduled and why we scheduled so that if you do choose to substitute some of those for something else, you have some good background as to why you're doing that and how you want to do that. So let's see how these fit together. Um, in the first graders, um, I mentioned Habitats. So this is a great series. It's the Over and Under series um, by Kate Messner. And this one in particular is called Over and Under the Pond. And all of the stories in this series are really, they're just these peaceful excursions out into the habitat between a child and their caregiver. Um, the illustrations are wonderful and we get to follow them as they go through 
um, this habitat and notice all of the different creatures and the life that is in the habitat. You're also going to notice um, for the first graders, picture books that are meant to encourage them to notice creatures that might be easy to overlook or that maybe we tend to be afraid of or think are gross. Um, so just know that that's intentional, okay? Because we all wanna read stories about cute, fuzzy creatures, but um, part of our job in education is to put away some of our preconceived notions and really try to teach ourselves to appreciate all the creatures and all the things from wherever our starting place is. So you'll have books like A House Spider's Life. Um, and again, this one just has beautiful, beautiful pictures, wonderful drawings in here. Picture books like this um, play such an important role for the kids because it allows them to really lean in with curiosity on topics where, you know, they might not. The first time they encounter the spider on a walk or in the corner of their bedroom or the window or whatever, um, it might be like, ooh, that's gross. But whenever they read a book like this, then they can go, oh, wait, let me look at that a little more closely. So picture books like that play a really important role. Our second graders zoom out a little bit as we start to talk about biome. Um, and you'll recognize these books from previous years. Um, these are great books. Our second graders are going to start, though, with these books in their own biome. Um, and I want them to really notice different aspects in their biome, in, starting in the place where they're familiar with. And then once they do that, that allows us to start talking about other topics like we have in Desert Giant for our second graders, where they're going to talk about keystone species. So this particular book um, is set in the desert biome, um, but keystone species is a topic that they will encounter in their own as well. And we're going to talk about that as second graders. So the desert biome um, book here focuses on the saguaro cactus and the role that it plays in um, shaping and managing all of the life within that biome. They'll also see some more books, some more um, picture books to help them appreciate some more of those unfamiliar creatures. This is another series that we're bringing to you this year. Um, this one is beautiful as well. This is the Secret Life of series um, by um, Lawrence Pringle and one of my favorite illustrators, Kate Garchinsky. So this one in particular is the Secret Life of the Skunk. And we get to follow this little family of skunks through the first year of their lives. And then the third graders zoom out even a little bit more as we start thinking about um, the physical factors and the behaviors of the creatures that contribute to the idea of ecosystem. So they still have a couple of picture books in there. But the third graders are going to be spending most of their time, their reading time in general science, reading about Buzztail and Leaper. Now, this is um, really two books in one. Buzztail is a timber rattlesnake, and then Leaper is an Atlantic salmon. So these two stories have a bit more words than the picture books had for the first and second graders. And they bring in all sorts of um, ideas from ecosystem, like food chains and life cycles and weather and climate and migration um, that we're gonna continue to build on when they move into form two. Now the third cornerstone of a Mason science program is that natural history. And so we've decided this year to have you guys use the Christian Liberty Nature Readers. Not all of them, there are quite a few of them, but we're gonna be specifically working with volumes one, three, and four in first, second, and third grade. I love that these are easy to read. I love that they are in contemporary language that will be comfortable for most of us um, and consistent with our place and time. And I love that these provide uh, a methodical exploration within the great variety of 
um, creatures similar to what Mason used in her programs. So those volumes um, for the Christian Liberty readers do increase in reading level as you go through them. Um, but please feel free to reorder the terms depending on your location and your seasons and whatever makes, makes the most sense for your outdoor time together. So I hope that gives you a good preview of some of the lovely new science books that you're going to have on your Form 1 program this year.